What's up everyone? I'm going to tell you a bit about Stardeus UI. I get a lot of questions why UI is as it is, why it's so bad, or why it's so complicated and confusing. So I thought I would make a quick video about how the UI is made and why it is just like the way it is, and uh, what may or may not change in future about it. So let's begin. First concept of the UI is that all these blocks that you see here, also when you click any item, all the blocks here, also when you click anything, all the blocks here, all these UI elements are pooled and reusable, meaning that the computer creates them once or maybe creates several copies of those. And when I close the menu, those copies get like held in the background. And then when I click something else, new object grabs those copies of the UI elements like these uh, buttons, these widgets and just re refills them with the right values, changes the icon, changes the text, and so on. Um, so that's one concept of how the UI works. Why is this important? This is important because the game has only a couple of places with some custom UI, like truly custom UI. One of this, uh, one of these places is the research tree, because in the research tree you have this uh, block, this square block with icons. And um, so yeah, this is like custom UI element. But as you can see, these here are also part of part of the same pool, part of the same widgets. So absolutely almost that everything with some exceptions is built from these reusable widgets, which means that I have only maybe like 10 or 12, 12 or maybe 20 different kinds of widgets that I'm using all over the UI. Some of them are combined. So for example, these little icons here are the same uh, widget like these icons here or like this thing here then uh, these icons in the bottom, this, this whole bottom tree is also just one button, which is stamped like 100 times and reconfigured to be different to show something. And it has some logic how like it's grouped into a tree, how things show up automatically and so on. So why I chose this way of building the UI? First of all, it's because of modding. Because if you would add new items or new categories, this bottom menu will rebuild itself. If you add new tools or new devices or new uh, like walls or floors, it will rebuild itself. So this is one reason. Uh, I want I wanted everything to be rebuildable from code and wouldn't uh, it shouldn't require like programming some extra UI changes or or like thinking how should I where should I tuck this new menu item or, or new button or whatever. I wanted this to be automatic. The other thing is that uh, anything that you select has components. So the whole the whole game is based off based on entities and components. So entity is, for example, this robot here, it's an entity. And this entity here has a lot of components on it, each component can do something uh, quite unique. So each component actually exposes something may or may not expose something in this menu right here. So this robot has at least like 15 different components. And some of them are quite simple. Some of the uh, some of them are a little bit more complex. But you can try to click most of these icons and you'll see something happen. So for example, this is the transform component, which makes the robot move. And it exposes the uh, button which allows you to follow the robot. So if we click that button, we're kind of seeing where the robot is going, and we're seeing where he, where he is right now. Uh, the second here is persona. So if we click this, we can see that there's a bot, we can hit rename, there's another UI element here, which is the input dialog. And it also shows age and production date. But then uh, since it's a cleaning bot, there's a cleaning bot component, which has some configuration. Uh, so it exposes some internal values that I can change through these, uh, like auto clean minutes, toggle auto cleaning, clean now, basically, you can control the behavior of the cleaning bot through this component. 
And this is like development tools that I added for myself. Uh, dockable means that if you click dock, uh, there's a dock for this robot. The robot will try to find it and so on. So basically, each of these things mean something. And each of these means some behaviors or some things that can happen to that entity. Yeah, so you can explore absolutely every object in the game and most of them will have a lot. And some of them will be common. Those, those uh, components are often common. So for example, energy node, you'll find the same energy node component on charge stations, on repair stations, on uh, connectors, on nuclear reactors. They will all have the energy node. If you select one and you open the submenu for that, and you switch to a different item, the submenu remains open. It means that this, uh, this is the same component showing its internals to you. Yeah, so this approach actually makes it very easy to build new UI and very easy to add it through mods. So if you would say add a new component for this space cleaning bot, space Roomba, that would, for example, allow you to attach weapons to it. So it would just require you to write one single class in C-sharp and then add it to JSON and then the UI will show up automatically in here and it would have some sub-menu where you would probably like select the weapon you want to attach and then AI task would be spawned to find the weapon and attach it and so on. So yeah, so this is why the UI works this way. And then there's this also, there's this environment tab which shows you current information about the selected tile and it only works inside the ship. So it shows the temperature, oxygen, room. If you click these icons, you can see the overlays will get toggled. It's, it's going to do the same thing as clicking these overlay buttons here. Yeah, so then uh, notifications. Notifications is also like when some event happens, the notifications get triggered. So they like end up accumulating in this list. Some of them are stackable, like there's no protein. And if you click, if it shows X9, it means that nine items are having this problem. And if you keep clicking the icon, it will cycle through all nine items and it will show you where they are. So as you can see here, we're we are having some auto kitchens that are trying to produce. What are they trying to produce? You just click the auto kitchen, you go here and see cooking. All right, so this component is handling the cooking. You can see that it wants protein uh, for the survival meal. It's set to cook unlimited amount of survival meals, but right now there is no protein to refill it. And there's these cloning pods, which are producing humans. And as you can see, when I selected the auto kitchen, it's uh, having this component open. And when I selected cloning pod, the UI changed, but it's still kind of similar. And it is because it is also open. It's because this is the same component. So basically the cloning machine and the auto kitchen is based on the same C-sharp piece of code, which is reusable and it's just configured slightly differently. And a lot of things are based on this uh, actually. Now let's take a look around the map here. The, these assemblers that can produce cleaning bots, steel plates and whatever. Uh, yeah, so they are also um, based on that same component, just with different configuration. Yeah, so whenever some event happens, it kind of is most likely related to some object. If it's not related to an object, like these suggestions here, so when you click this icon, you would see the suggestion appear in the bottom. So basically you will, most all, mostly always, if you click the icon in the events, you will get the like related item either displayed for you or some text displayed for you that will help you figure out what this thing is about. You can also hover these and you can see how old is the message in game time. So for example, not enough bio waste was two hours ago and not enough protein. We cannot see when because it's like nine, uh, nine events are stacked. Yeah, but uh, non stacked events are showing like build more grinders was suggested for us one hour ago. And no researches for 10 hours already. Yeah, so this is the event panel, then these overlays, these are also, you know, people say, why don't we have some separate button for the star map, for example, and we could have the star map as a separate button. No, we will not have that as a separate button, because 
it will be based on reusable code for the overlays just like the energy grid just like the oxygen it's just some system that exposes this button here which either shows you some visual overlay or either shows you some list of uh, things here like this resources inventory overview uh, so yeah so i'm trying to have as little as possible b building blocks and to make the game use those building blocks to create the whole ui so once you kind of understand how the logic was working behind this it gets much easier to navigate this ui and to understand where to find things there's uh, another thing like this menu here is like this is usually the most complete but some actions are in the context menu so the context menu if you right click the item here it usually has the collection of things from here for so for example build a copy is actually the same button as you can see here when it's selected and it will do the same thing order deconstruction also the same button uh, then switch off this is from the energy node switch off eject ammo is from the ammo eject ammo so these are like the most popular actions that are exposed uh, but there's for example relocate which you wouldn't have find here so some actions are available only through the light right click and it's not super consistent i know but uh, this is how it works right now i probably would add the relocate to this uh construction menu here i probably will do that so yeah sometimes it's not super consistent but just remember that uh, sometimes you, can, you have to check the like the right click the object to see maybe there's something more to it than in this menu uh, and then another thing about UI, all the UI is built using basically this little pattern. Uh, as you can see, it's just a list of buttons that are going down. Like there's one entry, second, third, fourth, and so on. And there's the next button. So there's a pagination. So if it doesn't fit into this list, you can paginate this and go back and forth. The same concept is used over here it's also just apart from these top buttons it's the same list it can also paginate it's the same list here it can also paginate it's same code handling these so when people say you know what just split this into two parts and just make it so that like you know you you click something here then you can click something here and yeah it just doesn't work <laughs> it just doesn't work this way because it's not how it's designed it has very tight constraints on how UI can be built. Uh, another thing that people are asking is like, I want to pin this. I want to pin this and when, when I switch to oxygen, I want to still see the inventory and I want to keep it somewhere here. So why is it not possible? It's because like, again, the system here, which exposes these overlays, just there, there's a constraint that only one overlay can have, uh, like can be displayed at a time and the system when you switch the overlay, it can reuse the same block right here. It's actually the, the block that is being checked. Like if you right click your mouse, it checks for that block if it's open and then it like closes it and so on. So if we would have these pinnable, it would mean that the whole concept of these overlays should change. So you basically be able to like activate more than one overlay. So again, this is kind of probably not going to happen anytime soon. Maybe it will, but, but probably not anytime soon. Uh, yeah, so star map is also very custom, but is also based on UI. And it uh, has a very similar thing to the research widget. Because you can see there's in the top left corner, there are some things here. You can refocus, you can do some actions here like uh, enter system exit system and so on and you can click arbitrary locations and initiate the space flight which will probably start fires in this ship because the engine layout is not great uh, but my point is that both research tree and star map widget also shares a lot of common code like all the navigation all the scrolling all the panning refocus all these things are shared so this is like also one type of widget which has some custom elements like uh, one research block, uh, this line here. The research tree, by the way, is auto layout. Uh, so if you add a new mod and you create some definition in JSON file that will 
create this this new block it will be automatically ordered somewhere here yeah it's, i thought that there will be a fire anyway let's let's watch it burn uh and keep going so yeah some more custom UI, these buttons here with speed are kind of custom, but they are also reusing, no, they are not custom, they are using these icon buttons here. Yeah, so, so the game is basically, the whole UI is built on a very small set of widgets with a very tight constraints. With modability and ease of construction in mind, so I can add new UI elements very rapidly, very quickly, it takes like 10 minutes to have a new UI menu item here with the sub menu with some actions bound to it with like buttons or, or whatever uh, so yeah. yeah let's mute this uh, so yeah that was the probably not that short explainer about how Stardust UI works I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that answers some questions that I get asked on on discord and modding and uh, sometimes just on the stream. So yeah, thank you for watching and see you in the next one. And I hope you enjoy Star Days. There is a demo available right now. So if you haven't played it, go to the Steam page. There will be a link in the description. All right, enough spamming. <laughs> Cheers.